Hello and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to share with you my August reading wrap up. In August I read nine physical books, listened to two audio books and DNF two books. So I think I'm going to start with the DNFs or should I start with the audio books? No I'm going to start with the DNFs and then I'm going to just go through the books in order that I read them. So the first one that I DNF'd was A Secret Diary of a Cool Girl. I thought I was going to really love this but I just got bored. I read a few years ago, um, I can't think, it was called Confessions of a Working Girl and I really enjoyed that but there's just something about the way that this is written that it's just not for me so I DNF'd that. The second book that I DNF'd I'm really disappointed by because I actually, oh, I've just painted my nails and I think I've just got nail varnish everywhere. Anyway, um, the second book that I DNF'd was The Museum of Broken Promises. Now, I was kindly sent this from Readers First to review, but I got about halfway through and I just, I was just bored. Let's just put it that way. I was bored out of my brain. Um, the premise of this book was absolutely amazing. It was the museum itself. Um, how can I put it without? So it goes between um, Czech republic during the cold war and modern day paris um and i think maybe if you're more of a francophile you'd love it i mean it says on the front we'll leave you yearning for paris i don't like paris <laughs> I, i'm just not i don't know I, I don't get the hype with paris um and one of the things that was left in the museum um a young boy left a matchbox there as he was promised that the tooth fairy would leave him money in it and then didn't and that was his broken promise so the premise was good but I didn't like the main character and there was just not enough story to keep me going so I DNF'd that one. Next I borrowed a book from my library. Now you'll know that I have, sorry my books are about to fall over, yep they've gone. Um, I have enough books on my TBR here, I do not need to be borrowing books from the library. However, I walked through the library and was confronted by Sophie Hagen's Happy Fat. I absolutely love Sophie Hagen and I wasn't sure what I'd think of this book because I've read a lot of um, fat positive literature, but the way that Sophie puts everything, she's a comedian and it's brilliant. There's even a chapter about supporting fat friends if you're not fat. Um, it's a brilliant first read into the kind of foray of fat positive books and I love this. I'll be looking out for my own copy of this. Um, yeah, it's one of those books that everyone should read and I gave that a five star. The next book that I read this month was a Convenience Store Woman. Now this month must have gone really slowly because it feels like I read this ages ago and I gave this a four star even though not much actually happens in this book. But I like that. Um, I like that it's just about this woman who, I can't even remember her name. Uh, you care, you carry? Um, and she works in a convenience store. And it's kind of about how the culture expects her to be married and have children and things. But she is happy being a convenience store worker. And I loved that. I thought it was brilliant. I think I said I gave that four star. The next book I was really disappointed by, it was the In Bloom, which is the second, is the sequel to Sweet Pea, which last month I gave five stars to. This book to me, I mean, it was okay. It was enough to keep me invested in it, but I thought the story moved a lot slower than the first one. And it was almost as if there'd been such a success of the first book, so the author had rushed to finish this that's what I thought and it was just I didn't enjoy it I was so disappointed and I don't know if that's because I'd hyped up the first one so much that this let me down but yeah I, I didn't like that one however if there is a third book I'm still invested in Rhiannon's character enough to read that so it obviously wasn't all bad the next book that I read was just weird so this is Too Close by Gail Curtis. Um, I, I don't know what to say without putting a spoiler on this. But it was just weird. Um, it was addictive in the way that I couldn't stop reading it, but I didn't like it. So that got a two star 
and that will be going to the charity shop because there is no way that I will be reading that again. Next, I decided to go for the lowest rated book on my TBR, which was The Almost Moon by Alice Siebold. Um, the Lovely Bones is one of my all time favourite books. And this, oh, I changed my mind so many times in this. I almost DNF'd it at one point, but actually I really, really loved it by the end of it. It was hard going and let me read you the first line. So the first line is, when all is said and done, killing my mother came easily, and that just drew me in. It was a very slow book, but it was all about, and the character herself wasn't very likeable, which at first I think is why I almost DNF'd it, but actually reading it through, I felt that it was such beautifully written about the complexities of relationships. So yeah, I gave that one a four star in the end. I then was going to take part in Thrillerathon. And my first book I read freaked me out so much that I ended up um, having to read some chick lit afterwards. And this was I See You Claire, by Claire McIntosh. I have now read all three Claire McIntosh books and I love them all. I would say that I Let You Go is my favourite and then the other two are very close second place. But this one... When I read the other two, I couldn't see myself in the position, but this one is based on um, Zoe Walker's commute, and it says, you do the same thing every day, you know exactly where you're going, you're not alone. And as I commute to work, it was just, it really made me think about my own safety and how these things could happen. Um, and I gave that one a five star. I then read Molly and the Cat Calf, now this one I also gave a five star. It was just totally different from anything I'd ever read. Um, and after reading the blurb, I thought I know exactly how this story is going to end. But actually, there were some twists and turns in it that I didn't expect. It's written from the cat's point of view, and there is a second book um, called Christmas at the Cat Cafe, I think. And I need to get my hands on that because I absolutely loved it. Oh. <sighs> Then I read M.C. Beaton's Agatha Raisin and the Quiche of Death. I've never read a crime book before and I love this. Um, I'm now going to try and read the Agatha Raisin series in order. So I think I gave this one four stars um, and I have already started reading the second one. The last physical book I read is actually up here. I re-rainbowed my shelves today. Um, and it was asked up by Laura Jane Williams. Now, after reading I See You, which was based on a commute, to then read this one, that it was as if they were kind of the same book, but one was written, like, in the negative thriller kind of way, and then this was written in the, pos in the positive. And I gave this one four stars. There are a few bits that I just thought that's a bit too convenient which is what stopped me giving it a five star but it is loosely based well it's based on Mr Connections which if you read the Metro paper that is like their rush hour crush which is my absolute guilty pleasure um yeah and I loved it there's some lines in it I read through the one star reviews on Goodreads and people are talking about the vulgar lines in it but actually they just made me laugh out loud I've got quite a dark and dirty sense of humor anyway but I enjoyed them so they were all the physical books that I read um, I'm gonna I don't have the audio books to show you but I'll try and insert a picture here of what they look like the first that I listened to was oh, do you know what it's I, I think it's why mommy swears oh okay I think it's why mummy swears or it could have been why mummy drinks I really should have looked at this before I started filming shouldn't I but I rated that a five star I didn't think it would be one that I'd like because I don't have children and don't want children but listening to it I loved it I absolutely loved it and the last book of the month was Dr Rangan Chatterjee's Stress Solution um, I mostly loved his first book, but he was a bit too preachy for me when it came to nutrition. But The Stress Solution was really good, and I'm looking forward to putting some of the things into practice. So they were all the books that I read this month. Let's show you the big stack here. 
I'm not going to include my DNFs in that. So some of these will be making their way back to the library and a couple of these will be making their way to friends and most will be going on to my red shelf. So let me know if you've read any of these books or if you have any recommendations of books that you think I'd like based on these. Um, until next time, if you enjoyed this video, please like it and subscribe below and I will see you next time and be kind to yourselves.